prophecies, revelations, economic collapse, martial law, social and civil, aliens, human hybrids, Nephilim, the great deception, world chaos, tsunamis. You want to stay tuned for special edition, End Time Revelations. Pastor Henry Schaefer and Pastor Steve Hall. CSRE. I'm your host, Henry Schaefer, and welcome to another episode of Project Seer. Seer. Project Seer, special edition of End Time Revelations. It is Thursday, June the 23rd. It is hot. Man, it's hot in this room. It is yes, hot. It is. <laughs> we, nice and toasty. Yeah, I'm really. telling you what. It's hot outside. It's hot yes. on the inside. And we got the air conditioning man coming. Yes. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to watch for him up there, too, because he'll have to come to that front door and ring that doorbell. <laughs> well, we got a great lineup today. I want to welcome the CSRA in. It's Tuesday afternoon, and I hope that you've been just settling right on in and looking forward to the new episode that we, we uh, push out every Tuesday here. Uh, of every Thursday uh, on uh, um, Project Seer. But we've got a great lineup here tonight. I, today I've got um, several people in the studio with us. I have Bill, Bill Turner. Turner. Bill, Bill Turner, Turner in He's the house. With us. Bill, Thank y'all for uh, having me. Uh, I look forward to this. Yeah, and we also yeah. have uh, evangelist Stephen Watson. He's with, with us hey, as man. well. Yes, I'm glad to be here again. He just got through preaching a, a fiery sermon right here in the studio with us. It's already been broadcast That's, once already. I appreciate that. Yeah. Give God the glory. Oh, so that was brand new. That, that, that was hot okay. off the press. Hot off the press. That was still press. smoking. Okay. Yeah. I like what he was saying. That was good. That he was said, good. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not voting for Ahab, and I'm not voting for Jezebel. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you like it is. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. <laughs> Steve, you got a good message. I appreciate that. Good, and yeah. if somebody wanted to get you to minister for them, how would they do it? Just call me at uh, area code 803-392-7164. Uh, be more than happy to uh, talk to them. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll come in deal. and light them up. Light them yeah. up. He'll do a good job. He's got jumper cables. He'll start something. Woo! We I needed them last. <laughs> that's, you know, last last Thursday we didn't have a program because I needed them jumper cables. Yeah, right up here in Carolina barbecue. We were stuck. It in the was barbecue messed house. up. So we apologize for that. But that was just something that. Um, did you get any just, barbecue? Oh, I got barbecue. Oh, okay. So did I. Yeah, and I got that yeah, but, starter fix too. That was barbecue. Yeah, but y'all did do the special on Monday night <laughs> that we enjoyed. We were up in the mountains actually and listened to it. Yeah, and, what uh, was that one there about? It was about that was the good. Florida shooting. Yes. That was a special edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did that. Was, uh, that was real good. Wow. So anyway, listen here. It's uh, just a couple of minutes after 2 o'clock. I want to get everybody to make sure they can go to uh, WUCC999.com. That, now, we always go CWChrist.com. Mm-hmm. But for those who don't know that there, new ones listening in, it's WUCC999.com. It's pretty simple. Easy enough wcc99.com it will take you to our website look at the right hand side of the home screen there a listen live button you can get out of your vehicle get your smartphone real quick go to that wcc999.com and then uh, run inside you listen to it and you get on your computer hello get on your computer type that in and you can listen to us anywhere in the world you got a smartphone got a tablet and also when we get through with this here we're going to this is our preliminaries here is that you can go to Ustream. How do you go to Ustream? What's the, what's the show? Uh, what is it? Steve's going to have to Seer. do it because I can't Project see it. Seer. Project Seer. But it's Studio WUCC on, on the Ustream. Uh, it's WCC. Uh, there Ustream. You go. There you go. Ustream.tv. Yeah. And then uh, search for WCC. And there you go. You do put it. Put it right to you. When we get through with this, it's uploaded to who? YouTube. 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 That I do now. Now, we get a lot of hits off that YouTube program. And you can go to Studio WUCC on Ustream, and you can look at all our live shows, yes. all the live shows that's in the past that's been done, all the ones that's going to be done in the future, and all the ones we're doing today. You can make sure that you can go to uh, Studio, w, Studio WUCC on YouTube, and you yeah. can look at all these things. There's actually no excuse for not uh, being able to see us or hear us, so... Yeah, you know, we got a lot of people who will call and say, what was that show? What was that show? Could you please send me a copy? And I send them the link. 
Right. Go to Studio WUCC. Right. It's free. You can listen yes. to everything we got. Watch it every day. Yes. And, they, right. and they're watching now, aren't they? Yeah. Right. Let's yep. look over here. If well, you look, look at the camera there, live. Yes. All of them are watching. Steve. Live looking all in. Watching. Everybody <laughs> smile. Y'all, y'all all be looking right here. Ooh, can you see how hot it is in here? Uh, right here. Sweat. Ooh, y'all feel it? It's hot. I hot. see the That's sweat hair beads on my hair. We got two air conditioners mm-hmm. in the place, and the one in the back just don't seem to be working today. Yeah, mm-hmm. We got the man coming He's to fix it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worth every penny. What's the, who's that? Wh- who's that? Do you, do you know the company? Uh, his name is uh, Derek Barton. Call Derek Barton. He'll do a good job. He's he will. Work. He, he is. Uh, I've recommended him to several people, and everybody I recommend him to always oh, thanks me. Know. They yeah. called me. I said that was the best recommendation. He saved me a bunch of money, and yeah. he did a fantastic he did job, and his attitude is right. Yep. Derek That's Barton. That's good stuff there. Yes. Derek yeah. Barton. He, he does wants, my work. He likes to drop off a little donation here. We, we can put him right uh, on Yeah, email. that's right. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started with our program today. Here's what we're going to be talking about. The last few weeks, uh, well, you know, the last three or four weeks, we've been talking about, you know, part of the program here is taking prophecies mm-hmm. that are out there in the body of Christ, and we take them, chew on them, present them to everybody, and then they have to pray about it. And they have to say, okay, you know, is this what's going to happen? So here's three things that we've been talking about. One is the fact that people are saying that there will not be an election for 2016, that there will be martial law and Obama will stay in. The others say that um, Donald Trump is going to be the next president. Some have said that. So, you know, we've aired some of those prophecies as well. Right. And uh, uh, then some says that Hillary some and then there's that middle class that says God's given America the choice. Yeah, and we will get to choose between Hillary and Donald Trump. Right. Mm-hmm. So we got several different prophecies from different mm-hmm. people, and uh, I think that we got to give some uh, exhortation today. Yeah, that's from this our great job. panel that we have to help them understand everybody's not going to be right. Somebody's going to be wrong. Somebody's going to be wrong. Somebody's going to be wrong. All our job is to present it to everyone. So don't say, well, WUCC said. No, we just said said what others have said. What others are saying. And and again, so what we do is put that out there. And the disclaimer is that this program can be, it may or may not reflect the views and opinions of the owners and the staff or the constituents of WUCC 99.9 FM. So please, don't pull your programs. We're just trying to go ahead and let you know that (laughs) We're just telling you what everybody else is saying, and it's not necessarily our opinion. And or it could be just for totally entertainment. Yes. Totally entertainment purposes that this program is on the air. Or there again, it could be keeping you from destruction in the very last days. You like to and find I, out. You know, and if you hear it at a, at a later point, you might hear something else that will bring back that memory, and you'll be aware of something that could save you. You know, a lot That's of right. heartache. That's right. So, so we got to get the word out so they'll have something put in their right. mind that they can use as a reference when something may yeah, might, come to pass. You might laugh at it today, but, you know, two months from now, you're like, uh-oh. Yeah, that's right. So you know? that's so, a good point, too, because what yeah. what may happen here in the next few months is one of these prophets may start to shine. Right. And we may exactly say, right. this one is the one. He or she nailed this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay? And then we'll say, so what happened to the others? And right. that's what this show is about. Yeah. Is they're not all going to be right. So we've got some stuff that may shock some of our listeners when we began to bring up prophesying or prophelying and can you do both? Yeah. <laughs> can you do both? Can yeah. you do both? As used as the spirit of God in, in 10 minutes later from the same pulpit mm-hmm. used by spirit of divination. Mm-hmm. we got a lot to talk about. People's going to be on the fence on a lot of this stuff, but we got some clarification to help here. you make decisions. So what we're going to talk about today is um, the... You know, what are the biblical signs of a prophet, yes. of, a, you know, prophecy, the biblical guidelines, biblical guidelines. What are the signs that a prophet is in your midst? I like that the one that's in your midst and that it's a true and genuine prophecy of God. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. the thing, can people miss it and yes. still be of God? Can people uh, be right on target and be of God or hit it and be of a done of the spirit? Yes. 
That's well, con- I know that the consequences in this day and age is nowhere near like it nowhere was. where it was back in the in the days. Of because the back in the day, you could fool some people in Alabama. Yeah, and people in South Carolina wouldn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody know about it. Now, yeah, now you can't fool Twitter nobody. And everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got we have you have to look at those those prophets of old. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna kind of like Steve. I know you've been doing the studying on this here. Steve and I, we kind of like chewed this thing out a little. Bit. We did. We we chewed chew on, on it, chew on it, chew on it. Say, oh, that'll make a good show. Let's do that. Yeah, one. let's do yeah. that. So we one. talked about it this week. So Steve, I'm gonna let you go ahead. Okay, and- this is where I want to introduce this. Somebody would say, "Well, you can't have both." You know, somebody said, "Bitter and sweet can't come out of the mm-hmm. same fountain." Okay, what? Whichever part of the body or the soul or the spirit is the fountain now, because if you're a person and you're you're a trichotomy, you've got a body, a soul, and a spirit. Right. Okay. Something can come out of your body. Something different can come out of your spirit. So right. let's just take a look and begin to, to divide a few things because if not, you get confusion. If you think you're just one being, you're not. We're locked in a body. We're a soul and a spirit locked in a body. The body will die. Yep. It'll decay. And that spirit's going somewhere for eternity. So let me use an example here. Saul, King Saul in, in the Old Testament. Now, we know that David was brought into King Saul's court not only because he killed the giant, but also because he could play skillfully and he would drive an evil spirit away from Saul. Mm-hmm. All right, so we now know we can, and this is, you can read this in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. So this is in the Bible? This is in the Bible. <laughs> but here's the second part of the same story. By the time you get to 1 Samuel chapter 19, oh, now, there's another spirit that's going to use Saul. Mm. Can I read this? Yeah, go ahead. Let me read this. It's in uh, 19, 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 22, 23, and 24. This is the same Saul that has an evil spirit that mm-hmm. David calms by his beautiful playing. He is now trying to hunt David and kill him. Mm. Yes. But watch what happens. Then went he to Ramah and came to a great well, that is uh, Sheku. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they are at Naoth in Ramah. And he went, this is Saul, thither to Naoth in Ramah, and the spirit, that's capital S, and I got the, See the Strong's words right there? All I got to do is touch that, and I can give you the absolute word from Hebrew. I'm not going to do it. It takes much time. But this Spirit of God. Spirit of God came upon him, that Saul, also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Ramah. Verse 24. He stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel, before the man of God himself, Samuel. You don't read nothing bad about Samuel in in, in the Old Testament. So uh, he stripped off all his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore, they say, is Saul also among the prophets? So I just showed you an evil spirit would overcome him. Yep. David would play. And then I show you the spirit of God overcame him and he prophesied night and day. Right. Lay it in the midst of the man of God. Right. Among other prophets who were prophesying. Yes. That's right. Now, there's something to hash over. Can a man, and it's the Old Testament version, in the New Testament, can a man use, be used by the Spirit of God to do a great work? Ten minutes later, be used by another spirit because it switched. No longer is he prophesying out of the Spirit, his Spirit, where the Spirit of God dwells, but out of his flesh. Yes. Oh, this is going to get deep, y'all, so hang on. Please don't <laughs> nobody say we're heretics because we're discussing things that nobody else will talk about. That's he heard, me, he heard me say a word yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're trying to stay. Don't try to stay on the safe side, brother. I brother stay Schaefer. on the safe side. You can't. You, you, get in the, you get in the mud too quick anyway, so he's just trying to get in the middle with us. Someone said I had a gift, and it was just about offending people. I said, what? <laughs> they said, yeah, you have a gift to do that. I said, what? That must be the Bible I'm talking about. Special then. gift. Special gift. So I don't try to do that. That's the anyway. tenth gift of the Spirit, the <laughs> <Yeah>. gift of offense. <laughs> okay. Well, he, Jesus said the word would offend people. He did. So, Didn't he say that? Well, we got this is a deep subject. So what we did to set this thing up, we showed you some prophets who said uh, Obama stays, some that said, uh, you know, maybe Hillary, some that said definitely it's, it's going to be Trump. Who's it going to be? Somebody's going to be found out not to be prophesying from the right spirit. I, can I raise my hand and say something? <laughs> I'm raise my Go hand ahead. and say something. Like that. Let me interject this here. So let, so let me kind of lay a foundation here that I would look at is that when I look at someone or I, I receive a, a prophecy from somebody, okay, you know, like just Saul, Saul, just say Saul, okay, or anyone nowadays, because it doesn't matter. 
I look at that that I believe that there's prophecy can come out of um, three different uh, forces, three different revelations, mm-hmm. three different entities can prophesy. First one can be, of course, yourself. Prophesy what you want to prophesy. Yeah. The other one can be a prophecy from God. You know, yes. the Holy Spirit speak through you, and it's a true prophecy. And the other one is just as like you said, could be from a false spirit. A de- uh, demonic spirit? A, a demonic spirit of spirit. divination? Spirit of divination. A familiar spirit? But uh, but, but it being from the devil. It could the be devil. from the devil. Right. And whatever ever how he does it. So it would be God, the devil, and self. Yes, three voices. Three voices. Yes. And that's the God, same way it was in the self. Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Same way it is in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. But what's so amazing to me is that people, when they get in the New Testament, they don't believe that can be operating from the pulpit like that. Yes. Because if they're baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues, they're saying there's no way that they could be prophesying from a false spirit. I'm going, look at the Old Testament. It's a pattern. It's the pattern of how things are and how we are today as well. Yes. Does that make sense? I mean, it's, yes. it's the same thing. It didn't change. Can I give an example? Go ahead and give me it's an example. It's going to offend some people. Go but ahead. really, it's the truth. Go ahead. You're sitting in church. Everybody, pastors and all of us, we all have this flesh. And the next thing you know, you have an ungodly thought come through your mind. Mm-hmm. It might be one of revenge. That person said this. Yes. Or it might be one of lust. Oh, that one looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Or it may be one of covetous. I wish I could sing like that. I wish I had that man's anointing. So you're coveting. It could be any of those things. And you're in church and everybody's shouting in the Holy Ghost and you being tempted by the devil. Right. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so it, does that happen to anybody but me? I, it happens only to you. me. It's only you, bro. You know, I, I just got condemned. I, I, well, you're talking about them. You ain't talking yeah, about us, I'm right? I'm a preacher. It don't happen to me. <laughs> you so, know, yeah, it happens, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no I'm, I'm just finished. I just want to say it. Yeah, but that's exactly right. You know. Well, let me, let me go let me go to the Word of God, and, and let's talk about the three different spirits, you know, the three okay. different sources. It's called three different sources of revelation. Mm-hmm. It could be self, God, or the devil. Correct. When I look at it here, and, and you, when, you know, we talked about we we're going to do this here Monday, I think we called and said, Brother, what are we going to be speaking yeah. about? We knew it was in trouble then. <laughs> yeah, when we started looking at what are we going to talk about. So we prepare before we come. Yeah. So as I'm doing my regular Bible reading for this week, there, look, listen, this is the passage of Scripture, that I, and I wasn't planned. It was just, this is what I'm reading right now, and it was Ezekiel 13. And here's what he says in Ezekiel 13. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Mm. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets, that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Now think about this here in yeah. modern times, that there are people who prophesy out of their own spirit. He says, ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither have ye made up the hedge for the house of Israel yeah. to stand in the battle, battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, the Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Ye have not seen a vain, ye have ye, have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say, the Lord said it, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither, and he talks about judgment will come upon them, because they have seduced them, saying, peace, and there will be no peace. And they will build up a wall, and there won't be no wall. But anyway, as I was reading that, you know, as we were talking about what we were talking about, I'm going, man, I'm reading exactly what God said against the false prophets of Israel, that they had... They were prophesying out of their, out of their own heart. Yep. And that's the same thing that you can find operating in the church nowadays, yes. especially in a Pentecostal church. Yes. When we believe out of 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, when we believe that God calls all of us to prophesy, yes. we can have a, a you know the gift of prophecy. And he says, I would that you prophesy. He wants us to prophesy. Amen. And to share things of uh, exhortation, edification, and comfort. But what we're talking about, when we're talking about this, we're not talking about just the simple gift of prophecy. Yes. 
This is just not a simple gift of prophecy. We're talking about people who are fulfilling a quote unquote, an office yeah. of a prophet yes. right. that will stand on the national platform and who will be like Ezekiel and Jeremiah and different ones and yes. say, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're not talking about Sunday morning being in the church and, and God speaking through a person saying, I see your, I see your cries. I see, I am with you, saith the Lord. And I'm there to, I mean, whatever he's going to comfort that person, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a prophecy that goes out like them. And God says, I didn't send you. I didn't say that. And you're prophesying out of your own heart. That's where the program is actually at, what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I was thinking about what you were saying there. And, uh, um, I think, I think the danger of false prophecy and people that claim to be a prophet is the damage that they can do to the people of God when they allow self to overtake uh, their brain and, and, and allow their tongue to say things that have nothing to do with God. Uh, there were requirements in the prophecies of old. Um, prophecy had to be... Had to be Tell uh, me what they are, uh, okay. uh, Steve. The prophecy had to be made known prior to its fulfillment it must be beyond all human foresight <laughs> it must give details there has to be a sufficient time to elapse between this is number four okay between four. the announcement mm -hmm. and the fulfillment and that's to prevent the prophet or a third party trying to fulfill it and there must be a clear and evident fulfilling of the prophecy and the reason this was if i predicted there will be an earthquake in a certain city. There's a one in two chance that it's going to happen. If I add a date, the chances decrease one in four. If I then say it will be during the day, it will be one in eight decreased. If I add another detail, one in 32. The more precise the prophecy, the less of the guesswork. Yeah. And it happens is true prophecy. Let me tell you one. Sunday after Sunday morning service, I will be at me ranchos. That's a one on one thing, brother. You got that one hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's gonna now, be let me, right. Let me throw something in there now. Oh, Lord because, don't tear it. Because you have an other half and I know Sister Shaper's pool. Uh, and if she says, No, honey, we're not going to me ranchos today. Oh, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> So it's a one in two chance. <laughs> you you know he'll be there at some point during the when week. I hear what That's one hundred percent. The more details with or without you, the more the details same. you put in it. Yes, I'm talking about the more details you put in it, the it's less likely. The when less. somebody comes up and says, uh, "I'm prophesying over you," um, God's going to do something wonderful for you. That's not prophecy. No, that's that's uh, exhortation, edification, yeah, and comfort. Yeah, I I I I had a situation a long time ago where a woman who considered herself a prophet. Matter of fact, called herself yeah, a prophet. Yeah, because I want to make sure that we differentiate yeah. between yeah. the simple gift of prophecy yeah. and a person who is operating in that. Well, this woman actually called herself a prophet. Okay. And she went to a house where a man was laying on his deathbed. And the family, uh, which was quite large, was surrounding the room. And she prophesied that this man would would get out of that bed, walk in, and then he was going to be made. He was going to. He was going to come out of this affliction. He was going to live. He wasn't going to die. That man died that night. And the family became so infuriated with her that they called several preachers in the area, wanting to know how she could be calling herself a prophet and do that. And one of the ladies said, "I'm a Christian." She said, "I can forgive and understand." And she said, the rest of my family's lost. And then she said, you'll never win them to God now. Mm. Mm -mm. Well, there you go. That was not prophesying out of God's spirit. That was another spirit. So we ask ourselves a question. Is this woman a Christian at all? Or is she absolutely working from a demonic foundation? Yeah, that's yeah. what I question. And that could oh, be, it could be true. Confused. She could be it, She could be innocently confused right. by the voices that she hears. Right. And be deceived to think that every voice talking to her is God, because I have voices. Now, don't think I'm crazy, y'all. No, y'all no, looking at me now. Don't right. look at me like that, Bill. No, <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I have agree voices with you. that talk to my head. Right. 
And sometimes it's, I believe it's my voice. Sometimes it's a demonic voice. Sometimes it's God's voice. Right. And sometimes it's my wife's voice. And that's the one I really got to be careful you, not to you miss. You better listen yeah. to that one. Yeah. And all that's I'm a little bit it, of everything. George Jones, <laughs> George Jones wrote a song one time, I Hear Voices. He said, uh, he said if I'd listened to a few of them, I wouldn't have drank liquor. <laughs> And, and, that was the right and, voice. That was the right. right voice. Well, what do you think about the ones? Now, I follow um, a gentleman that who I love dearly. I, I trust him. But when he um, prophesies, he always puts in the fact that, um, but if we pray on it, God said, it'll keep it from happening. If we pray enough, it'll keep it from happening. Okay. What do you think about that? Uh, I what? think he's putting a condition that could be true. Because prayer does change things, but he's maybe giving himself a way out too. Well, I, let me, right. let me, that's let me, why I look at it. Let me tell you. Let me uh, why we're going to go. Doesn't lessen it. It's twenty four minutes after the top of the hour. You're listening to projects here. We're talking about uh, prophecy. We were talking about the last prophecies of Donald Trump making yeah. pr- being president, mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton law. not being president, yeah. being president, or martial law, or or a sundry of different prophecies. So we're looking at okay. What did the Bible have to say about prophets, prophecies, and, um, you know, what are the stipulations, the conditions, and how can this be when someone may miss it, may get it right? What spirit can be operating through a person? And in, in what you were just saying, Bill, let me get to that point, to where you were just saying, okay, a person says that, okay, let, let's just say they say, if unless unless America prays, there may not be a 2016 election. That's right. not a prophecy. No, no. And it, I don't and, consider it a prophecy. No, no. And that's, and that's what I want to share with people is that there can be a thing that is called the will of God. Yeah. Then there is a thing that's called the perfect will of God. Yeah. And, and the Bible specifically tells us that we should pray that God's will be done. Amen. The reason he says that is because a lot of times God's will is not done. Yes, amen. What he perfectly wants to happen is not done. So he says, pray that my will be done. So when a person prophesies or a, per- a person says something like that, is that there is a, a thing that is conditional, mm-hmm. and it's conditional whether or not we pray or not yeah. for God's will to happen. Let's, let's take it in context now. Let's say it like this. There will not be a 2016 election. There may not be a 2016 election unless – God's people's praise. That's the same thing as what Jesus just said. Pray that God's will be done. Mm -hmm. So I see that in application, not a prophecy. But when the prophet stands up and says, thus saith the Lord, there will not be a 2016 election. Then there is no, there there is no involvement of us in it. Right. That's right. There is no involvement. There's no God. God's already said, this is already predestinated. It's preordained. This is going to happen. It will yeah. happen at this, you know, ever when it's going to happen, but it will not happen. But there are there are events that I believe that we are involved in yeah. that is conditional upon our praying right. and I, right. that we can change that we can change things. And let me just say this and add it to that. Okay. I don't know whether everybody in the panel is going to agree with this or not, but I'll tell you why I believe it. I tell you what I believe. Number one is that God knows which way we'll go. But he does not fix it. He is omniscient. He knows absolutely everything, the end of something before it ever begins. He knows who's going to win the election. I don't care whether we pray or we don't pray. Right. But if he has a fixed outcome that's going to make that's going to happen, he can use us to bring it to pass. And so he gives us the word, pray. Yes. And then when we pray, his will is done. Because it's his will that none perish. But all come to repentance, but that's not going to come pat, come to right. pass because most people are going to perish. Right. But still, the inclination is if we pray, he hears, and it opens doors. He knows the destiny of every person, I believe, right now because he knows everything. He has to know. He and all the possibilities. And all the possibilities. All the possibilities. And every decision they'll make that's right. going to lead them to their final destiny. But he didn't fix. He didn't set any of those. So I know that's getting into some deep theological stuff. Yeah, that's, that's where we important. differ on some things, but that's all right. But that's, it's important <laughs> to, to come to this understanding uh, here that when somebody's prophesying and they say, thus saith the Lord, Th- this they is have nailed happen. this down. Exactly. And if it doesn't happen, they're absolute false prophet. Right. When somebody says these are the potential outcomes if we pray and if we don't pray, that's absolutely can be true. Right. But it may not be an exact prophecy either. Right. When I read prophets of old, they had exact prophecies with dates, yes. with names, with events, and they were future. 
So when right. somebody predicts something in the future and they say, thus saith the Lord, I pin them down. You're going to be right or wrong. If you're wrong, I'm not saying you're a hypocrite. I'm not saying you're dying and going to hell. I'm right. saying you could have been working out of the wrong spirit. Uh, I like that because you got to look there either out of three buckets. You're three working buckets. out of this one, this one, or this one. Yes. And yeah. the thing is, the way we will know, the way we will know is for one thing to say, if it's nailed down a certain date, time, whatever, that's a prophecy. Yeah. A sure event is going to happen. If there's anything is conditional, if you say anything conditional, then that's the will of God and you don't know. Yes. You know, and that's why we're to seek to know God's will. That's why we're to to find out what the perfect will of God is and to walk in his will. You know, so you have an involvement in that. But when that prophecy comes forth, like a virgin shall conceive, but I don't care what you ain't not going you ain't I don't care how much you pray for it against it, that's going to happen. It's got to happen. Because he says that's the way that's the way it has to be. And you know, I'm not sure so sure we've seen a lot of these these things been said like that. I'm not either. I think we give a lot of a lot of prophets and prophetess give themselves a way out a way right, out right you and know, then that's the will of now, god then, now you know? i know you steve talked about voices before we can receive a prophecy from voices i'm assuming dreams also yeah that can be vision, that's, that's a way yeah yeah exactly revelation mm-hmm. you know one of the things that i've seen our government do is they'll use second chronicles you know about you know, returning back to God, humbling ourselves, and coming back, and the land will be healed. Yeah, they'll use that a lot to describe the moral decay and condition of the country and the United States. And and if we'll do what the Bible says, restore us to relationship with God, and that that prophecy there is taken out of context. Uh, that prophecy was was meant for Israel. Solomon was about to, um, they was about to, you know, dedicate the new temple. And, 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 and that prophecy was for God, but we'll see people in Congress, the Senate, the President, they'll use that, and they'll relate it to the United States. But uh, they use it out of context, and they don't use it correctly. And one of the things that we have to be careful when prophecy is being made is that the literal prophecy has to be believed and understood uh, it can't be broken up in little segments where you have to puzzle it back together. Um, that's one of the things, you know, when when uh, uh, Elijah went to Ahab, he walked right into the courtroom. He didn't announce himself because his name already said uh, that God, Jehovah, was his God. He walked in there. He looked at Ahab, and he said, Until I say so, it will not rain nor dew will come on the earth. And they were in a drought. Mm. And, 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 and the drought was going to last until he said so. And what this man did, if you, if you really think about it, with boldness and courage, he went in there and prophesied to Ahab, you're going to get a dry mouth till you turn yourself over to God. And, and, and so we, you know, you can go to, go to the kings and read that. But we live in a day and age that people that are making prophecies, a lot of times, you know, was it Gene Dixon? I believe that's the name. That's right. Prophesied Kennedy's assassination. Mm-hmm. But she, well, she give, was an astrologist, too. Yeah, right? she was yeah. an astrologist. Yeah. And she, she, she didn't give enough details. Mm-hmm. You know, if she said it was going to happen on November 22nd at Dallas and he's going to be in the car and the hood was going to be off the car right. and the man was going to be up on the fourth floor or something of the, mm-hmm. of the library and he was going to shoot with, with a carbine and he was going to – she gave details and it came to pass. That's one thing. But they'll give you just enough to dangle a carrot in your face, and you don't get nothing for it. Right. So there's a lot of prophesying going on in churches today. I mean, everybody wants to call in a preacher. They say, brother, he's always got a word for everybody. He might have a word for you tonight. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is the way I check it. Number one, I don't let anybody anoint my head with oil unless, well, I don't let nobody anoint my head with oil. Bottom line. Let me just throw that out there but one thing i'm gonna wash my hands and stay hey if they're if they listen to if they're gonna speak a word to me Uh it's gonna be a confirmation yes it's not gonna be instructions for something new in my life that they want to put in that they think god or whatever voice they listen to right uh, wants to put in because if it's if i'm right with god number one i've already heard god's voice 
and it's a confirmation. Right. Prophecy will con- confirm it what God's will, already showed you. It right. will be a confirmation. Mm-hmm. And somebody comes to you in church and says, oh, God's got a great ministry. You're going to leave here and go to Africa, and you're going to become the greatest missionary Africa's ever seen. And then you take that prophecy, but you never heard that before. God never spoke it to you before. And you just go selling everything, and you go to Africa. Mom and Dad might be buying you a plane ticket back home one day. Have, right, have right. you ever had? Have you ever had in your ministry someone stand up in your church and say something you knew was just absolutely nonsense? Yeah, yeah, I have, as a matter of fact, <laughs> and, a lot. <laughs> and it puts you in uh, yes. a situation. It put you know you have to you have to you know. Uh, you don't want to quench the spirit. You don't want to do anything that violates uh, the word of God. But you're the shepherd of that house. You're right. responsible for that congregation. For those, right. you're re- you're responsible for the content of what goes on in the house of God that you've been put over. However, I am not responsible for the prophetic word that they gave. That's true. God makes them responsible yes. for the prophetic word that they gave. Now, if it contradicts uh, Scripture, then I'm responsible for nip correcting it, it nip according it. it to Scripture. That's exactly right. Yes. Uh, Got to nip it. Yeah. But otherwise, then the burden's on them. And when it does not come to pass, they will be proved a false prophet. When it does come to pass, they'll be, they be, can't, may be confirmed a true prophet. But uh, there again, does that mean they're lost? I may know their life and say, you know what? They were having a bad week. And they miss that prophetic word, but I believe in my heart they're good, safe, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost people, but they prophesied out of their own spirit or their own heart right. or their own mind. Now, um, just out of, have, have y'all ever had a prophetic happen to y'all? I mean, personally? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it's saying, hit it right on the head. Yeah. Okay. Well, I knew you. Because I was God knows. Yeah. The, uh, okay. Yeah. I've all, me personally, I've only had one vision, and that weighed on me. I felt like I weighed 500 pounds. I mean, it, you can ask Dane. I, w- I was going through turmoil, praying, praying, praying. Um, right. I mean, it was. I knew then I don't want to be no prophet. I don't. Want <laughs> you know, I don't know what the, I don't know. I don't know what this was in in in, in reality. I've prayed about it many times, but uh, back in 1962, when I was just a little boy, we lived in Ankara, Turkey. And I remember one night, uh, in the middle of the night, I literally saw a hand, just a hand from the wrist, and it looked like that hand was moving through the hallway. It sounded like my daddy's hand yeah, yeah, coming to me. Yeah, it, it, and, it, and it did, it did, and it was, it was big, it was large, and, I, and, and, and you know, when I saw it, I wasn't frightened, mm-hmm. didn't scare me, but I told my dad the next morning what I saw. And my, my dad, you know, he at first he said, well, you you probably dreaming. Right. But the next night, we were asleep and we were awakened by um, gunfire and bombs and, and jets flying over real low, breaking the sound barrier. And I looked out the window and they were having an attempted coup on the Turkish government there in Ankara, Turkey. And they were shooting. They had machine gun nests set up and everything. And when my dad got to the door, the Turkish soldiers told my dad, y'all stay in the house and stay away from the window. Stay down. That lasted for three days. And when uh, it was over with, my dad came to me. He said, I don't know why, but he said, I believe what God was showing you, even though you were too young to know it. He said, I believe God was showing you that he had his hand on this family. Yeah. And that he was taking care of us. And I believe that to this day. Now, some people might say, you silly, you crazy. But I believe it because I saw it. Yeah, it was God showing you he's taking care of you. And, and I you was just a boy. didn't even know because it was, it was something that came to comfort you before distress ever came. Yes. Right. Yeah, so that right. was a prophetic uh, event. Yes. I wouldn't say a prophetic word, but that was a prophetic event. I and I couldn't that. explain it. I had to have, my father had to actually explain it to me. So, you know. I, b- I believe seriously uh, the reality of real prophecy still exists. Amen. It still yeah, I, exists. I believe in it wholeheartedly. Amen. With all my heart, Amen. I believe God still speaks. Yes. And I know also that in the last days there are many false prophets yeah. in the yeah. land. And at the same time, I think uh, as a Christian you need to um, listen more so you can uh, discern what's from God and what's not from God because it will um, – 
it'll correct itself real quick. And you know, <laughs> quick you're exactly right. I'm so glad you said that because the Bible exhorts us to try the spirits and see whether they are of God or not. Right. And it's not talking about when you're in the mm-hmm. world. It's talking about when you in church, y'all. Yes. Right. To try the spirits. I mean, so you've that got to tells recognize you, the voice. That tells you right there there's different spirits yeah. in church. And somebody could be on the wrong one and right. prophesying. And even if it's right, even if it's right, it's it was wrong. a wrong spirit that prophesied it. Right. A spirit of divination. I believe just a few months ago, me and Brother Schaefer was in a service, not going to name any more names other than that. We know. Together. <laughs> and uh, we know. Th- no, there was a powerful, nationally recognized man, and he spoke. And when he spoke certain things in the pulpit, the Spirit of God checked me and mm. said, he just used divination. That's not me. Mm. And he was way into witchcraft. He was, when I tell you he was as deep as you can go, he was deep. And I believe he had come out. I believe he got saved. I believe he's right with God, but all the spirits are not through with him and not out of him. Mm. And they can still, right, they still can come in. And when he is even working in God's power in the pulpit, that thing will pop up and he can't recognize the difference yet. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. So so I agree with it. Sounds good. My point. You read from me. Yeah, yeah, I've been digging. Now you see, you're digging in the Bible. I've been digging. You been really writing. got something out of the printer. So I, whatever you got, we obviously need to hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You know, we. So you know, one of the prophets that we prophetesses we talked about was Glenda Jackson. Yeah. So I want to I want to um, tell you something about Glenda Jackson here. You know, so I read her bio uh, in this here, and it's going to go right along with what I'm saying uh, about. <clears throat> here's what I would ask you. Here's the, here's where we're going. What are the signs of a prophet what's the qualifications of a prophet to be called a prophet what are the, what are the signs of being a pastor or the calling apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher what are the qualifications and what what are they and there are certain things that i've been taught not from the church of god but certain things that i've been taught that i look for in in a person who tags and i do believe we have modern day apostles prophets evangelists pastor teachers Amen. and mm-hmm. you know and i do give i do give their title if that's what they want to be called that's that's it but whether or not it's a biblical call that's something else to that that i have to reason out in my own life does that make sense yes okay so so i'm not going to d- cut the title off just because that may not meet what i believe you see what i'm getting at so uh, glenda jackson is uh, glenda um uh, underwood jackson is a powerful prophet and healing evangelist of the Lord called to the nation. She moves in signs, wonders, and miracles to glorify Jesus. Now realize when you see this word, she's a prophet, so a prophetess or prophet. So in, look at what it already says about her. It says she want signs, wonders, uh, and miracles is what I'm looking for. Here we go. Originally from California, Glenda's ministry was established in 1974. Uh, she has been a missionary evangelist ever since. Her primary focus from 1974 to 2007 was ministry to the Native American people, American Indians. Now, you already know, Steve, if she's dealing with American Indians, she's deep into the occult and things like that that they're involved in, uh, in that. So we know that there's a lot of things that's going to be spoken, could be through spiritual things uh, in that as well. So she's called to the American Indians. So uh, Glenda's uh, father was C.L. Underwood, healing evangelist, but many will know her great aunt was Maria Woodworth Etter. So that was a great healing evangelist back in, back in the day who was a powerful apostle, evangelist, and pastor. Glenda carries that spiritual heritage. Now, I do believe things can be passed sure. from one thing to the others. On her birthday, December 29, 2007, Glenda had a powerful angelic visitation uh, from the Lord. She was told in that visitation the doors would open to her major ministries throughout the United States and that she would go and prophesy the word of the Lord to them. Since then, doors have swung wide open to Glenda's ministry. Glenda has ministered in some of America's largest Christian ministries, including the World Convention of the Full Gospel Businessmen International, Fellowship International, and from conferences for Benny Hinn. Glenda often says in response to her ministry, I'm nothing, it's all God. So when we talk about this here, we talk about this is her bio. This is one of the things that she she hit um, the that President Obama would be, Senator Obama would be the president. She prophesied that. She's also prophesied that God has showed her that there would not be an election, that there would be 
a um, a martial law if people didn't pray. Mm-hmm. And I think that's if you get things like this here. So, and she even also said here, and the last thing we ran was that the, that around Obama in the White House was Muslims. We know how to stir up trouble. Right. And within a month and a half, the shooting in Orlando happened. That's mm-hmm. right. So this is the things that she has said here. So when we talk about, I'm, in, I'm throwing this out here now. I'm going to do it to the panel here. What are the signs of a ministry? Fivefold, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I got five of them here that I've been taught. Okay. I'm not going to share them with you yet, but I want to throw them all out. What are the things that we would look for to see if a prophet was a prophet of God? These are good are questions. Spiritual people who, qualifications is yeah, that what you're talking well, yeah, about. Yeah, what are I mean what because you got a, you got a listening audience out right. there who is saying, Well, how do I know then? Other than waiting ten years for something to come to pass yeah. and all this stuff going on and me all along being following someone who's in divination. So there has to be something for us to know whether or not they are right or not. So let me just let me just share with you the, the, these five real quick then. Go right ahead, because the time is clicking. Cause here, so here's the thing, is that five things to fi- determine whether a person is a true or false minister of God, whether they be apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher in a five-fold office, here, here's what they are. Number one, number one is that they will always exalt Jesus yes. in their ministry. Always. I'm talking about a true one. Right. Now, you got to realize a false one can do this, too. That's why they're five. See what I mean? They're five tests. Here they are. Always exalt Jesus in their ministry. Number, th- number two, they will always be spoken in the name of Jesus. Whatever they speak will be thus saith the Lord in the name of Jesus. Number three is that it will always line up with current revelation that's already been given in the word. It will not be different than what's already been given. Anything they speak, nothing they speak, right. will be different than what's already been revealed in the Word. You talk about the Bible. Uh, the Bible. That's and right. here, now here's, here's another one. To be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, fivefold. Mm-hmm. This is what I believe. That you will be able to, to, uh, to relate a supernatural call to the ministry. There will be a supernatural call. Not just, I felt it in my spirit. Not someone prophesied over me. But Glenda Jackson said what? Her heritage. Her heritage, but it was an angel of the Lord. That's right. For the special spoken time. To, spoken to her, this is your call to this ministry. I believe that just like it was in the Old Testament, when God spoke to them through the voices, appeared to them, that they were called and set apart to those ministries, just like the Apostle Paul and those men who followed there and thereafter. They're called a theophany. Mm-hmm. It's a personal appearance of the deity of God speaking to his fivefold ministry, calling them into that office. Yes. Again, that's just what I believe. And the last thing bit, I'm talking about, you will be able to relate a supernatural call. So many times I ask ministers, and I ask people who have the name of apostle, prophet, I say, what is, what is your call? Can you relate your call to the ministry? Can you tell me what it is? Tell me that call. Some of them can't relate a supernatural call to me, mm-hmm. a supernatural event. It's just whatever. You know, right. I, just, I, I just operate in the prophetic. So you mean you, you operate in the normal gift of prophecy then? Because a prophet, an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, I believe, according to the scriptures and what I see here, will not, will, a prophet will also operate in a supernatural sign gift. He will have a sign gift that will confirm the word he speaks. Thus saith the Lord, just like Jesus, believe the miracles and the signs I do. Well, look what she does. Mm-hmm. You see, a prophet of God will be able to relate a supernatural call and will have a supernatural sign gift. If they don't have that sign gift to confirm that this is a man operating to me, then I, th- that could be one of them. This yes. is, these are, all these are all together. Yeah. Are things I look for. You see what I'm getting at? And here's the that the last one is this one here, is that the character of that person will be without question. Yes. There the you go. character of the person will be without question. He will be a man of God or a woman of God. It will not be laid up in some whorehouse somewhere. That's right. And not being coming out of some some place somewhere, standing out a pulpit, you know what I mean, and behind so these are the things that I look for when I see a true prophet of God. Do, do, that they're, they're saying, I'm a prophet. I'm going, okay. You say the words, and I'm looking at these things now. Let me read your bio. 
I want to see what your bio is. What can you relate to soup? And then when I pull her supernatural, I pull her bio. Yeah. It's got a supernatural call in it. You see what I'm getting yeah. at? So sure. that hits not saying that it's so, but it's one of the things I look for. Right. Is in that. So that's just kind of my take on the yeah. prophecies and the prophets and and, and it could be yeah. an apostle. Could if be. you could if you say you're a pastor mm-hmm. of God, I'm talking about a fivefold office. Yes. Uh, of God that you're going to operate in the supernatural and all, you got all these churches out here from uh, A to Z denomination and you got pi- pastors standing in the pulpit and there's no supernatural yes. yeah. operation in their life. I don't believe they're called of God. Mm-hmm. All of them stand. You hear what I just said? I don't believe none of them are. But with that said, let's say this to, I'm going to add this to that. And well, you, you can help me out, you bro. Can, you can do whatever you want to with it. A man of God or a woman of God can come out of obscurity and boom, God place them right where he wants them mm-hmm. and they be prophets. They could be anything in the fivefold ministry because God can take just like he took, uh, which one of them came Amos. from being a tender, hey, Amos. tender of the figs. Mm-hmm. And so, but God called, he said, I'm not a prop, but when he came on the scene, he was right. So God can bring somebody out of obscurity mm-hmm. and push them in a predominant yeah. political, but position they come with whatever. a message too, but they have a direct they got a message. message. Right. They have a direct message from God. And they say, this is what this thus saith the Lord. And so you can't always, it's not most of the time I do like to track the to catch that track record mm-hmm. and ask the questions. But sometimes the spirit of God rises up and say, that man's right. I don't even mm-hmm. know him. Don't right, even know right. the man. But right. what he just said made my spirit bell ring, ring, right. ring. Yes. Right. And I get a confirmation in the spirit that we are the sons of God. Sure. Yeah. And I, you know, I felt that way over uh, Brother Ryland, first time I heard him. George Ryland, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you know, when, when, and, and when a person tells me that they are an apostle of God, of course, like Paul. Paul was an apostle of, of proof Jesus. Of your apostleship. I want to know you, proof of your apostleship. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. that you operate in the. I w- was your sign gift. Yep. Paul said, "If you don't believe me, believe the miracles I do. You don't right. believe me, do the works. The works I do. I want to see your sign. I'm looking for the sign yeah. that confirms what you're saying in that here. And another thing is, and when a per- person tells me they're an apostle, what's your message? Yeah. If you are an apostle, you have a message. Tell me your message. Yeah. You say, well, I'm just going out on message. No. If you're on an apostolic journey, that's right. What is your apostolic message? Don't yeah. just tell me I'm an apostle going out. What if you're an apostle being sent out? Tell me your message. And George Ryland came here. He sat right there in that chair where you're at, brother. He says, "I am from South Africa. I'm sit on a I'm sent on an apostolic journey, and my message is time it's tongues. time for tongues." And he says, "I only have one message to send to every church I preach mm-hmm. and wherever I yeah. go. It's it's time for tongues." And I can understand that because I always, you know, my first calling into ministry was uh, 1972. I was a young man, uh, but it didn't happen for me. And uh, I went in the military, and in 1973, the devil tried to kill me. And it took me years to get my life right back with God. And in 2003, I gave my heart back to the Lord. And it was almost immediately I was in a, in a little holiness church. The power of God was on me. And, and I felt the voice of God say, who do you belong to? And I said, I belong to you, God. He said, now it's time to do what I called you to do. Yeah. He, the calling had never left me. Amen. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that I was impressed so much is that I grew up under a, a, a dad who, who, who didn't just preach revelation. He knew revelation. And I had grown in Revelation, the book of Revelation, consistently in my life. And I always wondered why I knew more about that in the book of Daniel than I did any other book in the Bible. And it was because when I started preaching, almost every message that I preached seemed to be relating to uh, the wickedness in the land, the coming of the Lord, and those things that are to be, you know, we look at the, 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 the prophecies as the ones that um, have been fulfilled in the past. We look at the ones that are presently uh, being fulfilled, which relate to the nation of Israel and the Jews and the moral decay of Israel. But there's the prophecies that Jesus put in Revelation where he said, he told us, he said, these things he told John to write. He said, and don't seal the book. He didn't tell Dan. He told Daniel to seal the book. To the end. Right? Till the end. But he told John 
don't seal these things that are to happen. And so I believe that we're in a day and age where prophecy is is been fulfilled up to the coming of the Lord. That's my opinion. I believe that the only thing left is for the rapture, the taking away of the church. Mm-hmm. After that, there's going to be some more prophecy fulfilled. There's going to be a lot of it. A lot <laughs> of prophecy is going to be fulfilled. Yeah. Yes. And you know whether or not you, whether or not you believe that we are in Revelation now mm-hmm. or thereabouts, whatever sealed or uh, wherever you think we're at in Revelation, yeah. you know we're just we're not talking about where we're at in the tribulation period or coming up to it or in it. Yeah. Is that we're talking about things that people are saying? Are they of God? And there are certain things that we look. I'm, but here's 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 the thing is, is that I believe that if we're going to teach people and help them not be deceived in the last days we got to tell them what a prophet is well let me let me and let, what a prophet is not if you don't mind let me say Does that one, make sense let me say one thing uh i don't wish nothing bad on anybody and i have no desire to see uh conflict in our country but a lot of these people that 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 are in leadership um it's like nothing ever happens to them but if they're human and if they have the same frailties and the same uh, health uh, issues that most people have. They deal with things just like we do. We just don't hear about it. Now, I'm 62. I'm almost 62 years of age. I know Hillary Clinton's going to be 69, according to what I understand, when she gets elected, if she's elected. I don't know how old Donald Trump is. Uh, any, he's almost 70. Yeah, anybody after a certain point is subject to heart attacks, strokes, uh, fall, break your hip. Right. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of calamities that can happen. To, you know, you can fall in the bathtub, mm-hmm. and they're not eliminated from those things. Right. But uh, if somebody came up and they said uh, Hillary Clinton's going to fall in the bathtub and have to have a hip replacement, and it's going to happen on the 3rd of June. Yeah. I've always felt um, those two, we need to be concerned with who their vice president's going to be. Yeah. Once that's uh, revealed, um that's when Whatever's I'm going to make happen. my choice because right. there's no telling. I believe both of them will be women, and I'm not prophesying. I believe both candidates will will pick a woman. That's just my opinion. Well, I Brother, think a woman, a woman. I'm going to go ahead from here. I'll, Bill, go ahead. we got about four minutes. We can get on out of here. Well, I just appreciate uh, y'all letting me come out here and spend some time with y'all. It's been a while since we've all been together, so enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's been cool down a lot. Did it, did it get hotter in here, or did I just get calmed down now? After preaching, well, he just I calmed calm down. down. Yeah. I calmed down is what it Steve was. Steve brought the fire in here. And that's, yeah. <laughs> but no, thank you. I enjoyed the topic. Bill, it's uh, always good to have good you time. been part of any show. And uh, tell us about the shows you are. You do Heartbeats and. Heartbeats and Between the Pages. Tell us about Between the Pages. I do uh, Heartbeats with Bill George as a Christian um, song and then interview. And then Between the Pages is with my lovely wife. And that's a um, Christian book review. And we used to do the book review, but now we get people to come out and uh, tell us about a book they read. So it's gotten a lot better. Okay, um, good. Yeah. So, all right, brother Steve. I just wanted to say, if I could, uh, shout out to uh, Pastor Ronnie Riddle at the South Omaha Church of God. South Omaha. Yes, he's listening today, and uh, he uh, he's actually my cousin uh, by marriage. But I will tell you something: we grew up together uh, uh, as young men. We worshiped together and praise God. S O C O G. All right, brother Steve. And you know, I, I appreciate the programming today. Uh, appreciate our listeners, especially uh, who stuck with us through this whole thing. Yo. And here, here's my <laughs> here's my final take on this thing. Uh, you get in the Word of God, and you get on your knees in prayer, and you let God speak to you. Amen. And don't you take what everybody else says to you as always being equal with what God has shown you and what God has shown you in His Word, because God. There's a lot of people who's going around in the name of God. Mm. But it's not God. And they're just confused. And I'm not saying they're all sinners. I'm not saying they're all lost. I'm saying they're listening to the wrong voice. Amen. And you need to be hearing the right voice so you can discern it. You need a spirit of discernment in the last days. If you don't have a spirit of discernment, pray for it. And that's God to give you a gift. And the gift is even further than just that common sense discernment. All right. So thank all our listeners. God bless you. And we'll be looking for you next well, week. Well, real all quick, right. what you said, you had a catch in your spirit. And that's what you need to pray for, that catch to come up when you yeah. hear something wrong. That's check. exactly right. That had a check. check. Yeah. Yeah. Something right, something right. We don't know what it is, but something right. And that'll go a long ways if you're going to determine what prophecy is real or not. So, Amen. well, I've been your host, part of the host, and we had a great show today, y'all. Yes, I've enjoyed and, it. Uh, awesome, awesome. So we're just gonna we're just gonna set back. It is in June. Uh, November's rolling around. We're gonna yeah. see what's gonna happen between yes. here and November. 
But uh, thank you for listening today. I'm your, I've been your host, Henry Schaefer. And tune in next week, same time, same station, on WCC 99.9 FM. God bless you as you uh, continue to uh, serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. We've been your host, Henry Schaefer and Steve Hall. The end times are here. Anything is possible. Are you ready? Don't miss the next episode of Special Edition. In time for revelation.